Hello everyone, my name is Soumya. I'm currently based in Berlin, though uh, I really follow Pi Ladies and I'm quite inspired uh, to give this talk today. Um, yeah, I've been working as a freelance Android engineer and I'm also the founder of Coderby. Coderby is a community that started as a result of um, lack of diversity for uh, because of women in tech and also uh, for minorities to give a platform uh, them to for them to come and learn to code. So um, just to give a little brief of, about myself, why I started this community. Uh, I come from India and I'm from Bengaluru mostly, uh, which is called the IT hub of India. And growing up, I was always interested in science and mathematics and mostly girls were excelling at these subjects and I did not have any um, bias in my head about me not uh, being able to handle this. But later when I moved to Berlin six years ago, I realized that there were so few women in IT and uh, yeah, it, it was quite shocking to see that there was hardly any women and I was the only person always going and working in or all male team. So which is why I wanted to help grow um, women who are interested to learn to code. So I started this community. And today I want to present this talk about um, diversity because uh, we all love to have more women in the uh, tech communities. And it's so nice to help each other, to lift each other up. And which is why I'm going to give you some tips on how to influence diversity in teams that you are in or at workplaces, for instance. So firstly, I just want to cover a few quick points about what, what were probably the causes of lack of diversity. And this is mostly keeping in mind the Western culture because I come from an Asiatic culture where mo most women, um, like 30 to 40 at least percent of women are in STEM fields. So I, when I was doing some research, I realized that the two biggest causes of lack of diversity was socialization and institutional bias. So to understand socialization, we might have to go back a little back in time, especially 40s when ENIAC machine was invented in the US. And you would see that the whole team of ENIAC machine were women. And back in 40s, uh, programming was a woman's job and especially mathematician uh, scientists there were a lot of scientists who were in programming and uh, this uh, just a, a few years later in the 60s and 70s you would see that when mainstream media and ads becoming uh, became popular that men were portrayed as faces of it or uh, because men were more uh, in um, media and ad agencies they brought more men inside um, and they actually caused this uh, problem of lack of representation where women started feeling like maybe this job is not for me and there were clubs for game boys and fanboys so this uh, resulted as a byproduct of um, institutional bias institutional bias uh, kind of uh, fueled socialization and whenever you don't see uh, women in certain places, you would have this uh, conditioning that women don't belong there. So uh, kind of these ad agencies made it uh, not normal for women to not do programming, which is why later you saw there was drastic change uh, in the amount of women uh, signing up for these kind of programs. And uh, just to understand what these biases are. So we all have biases and implicit biases are based on our backgrounds, our experiences and uh, where we grew up, how we grew up and what kind of families we grew up. So biases are the stories that we make up in our heads before we even talk to somebody. We just look at people and already have this idea of whether we belong with them or not. So this is just how our brains are uh, wired and uh, our brains are always thinking in binary that us and them. So just to make sure that we don't have this kind of bias, we would have to make conscious changes uh, in the communities to keep everyone um, in the loop and uh, incl include people in the communities. So as a result, there was also another survey and uh, project that was initiated to uh, find out why people have implicit biases. And people realized that societies which had implicit biases or this kind of institutional biases, showed this kind of behavior than societies where there were uh, there was no conditioning involved. 
So why am I explaining all this to you all? And why should businesses or companies care about uh, diversity? So firstly, companies care about making money. Companies care about having users all over the world. And software products are all about uh, users. And users are everywhere. And we want to build global products, which are accessible and useful for everyone in the world. That means building for everyone, uh, users with diverse backgrounds, uh, women, men, uh, other uh, non-binary gender, for people of different age, people of different color, people of uh, coming from diverse, uh, to having diverse topics, uh, people with accessibility, for instance, we need a workforce that represents these users and use cases uh, that serve these uh, people. So we need to build businesses which are inclusive. And why is diversity important? A Google research says organizations with greater diversity were associated with greater profits, greater sales, greater customer base, all good things. And teams that are uh, heterogeneous uh, as compared to homogeneous in meaningful ways showed higher potential for growth and also innovation. So that means uh, that people uh, which are, who are coming from diverse backgrounds can contribute way better and per outperform people of uh, similar backgrounds or similar gender, et cetera. Individuals on teams also who felt higher psychological safety uh, also showed that they could harness the power of their ideas freely. And this as a result showed in their uh, reviews, appraisals, and their executives felt they were more effective. And the sweet spot, if you're from a marginalized group or if you're in a place where uh, there are not many women, you, the sweet spot to have just to make sure that there are enough critical mass for voices to be heard is 30%. So if your company does not have this kind of uh, diversity, you might have to speak up and uh, ask for it. So just coming to the point right now, what are the basic thing, uh, things you can do uh, to influence diversity around you? First of all, if you are in a position of power where you can make an uh, informed decision about opportunities, always provide unbiased, unbiased uh, opportunities. That means that uh, even for children, not just for people around you, um, for children, make sure you give that platform where women, girls and boys can uh, experiment with their ideas, build together without having these negative stereotypes in their head. So definitely avoid this kind of language and uh, stereotyping. Uh, challenge these status quo wherever and whenever you can. Uh, next is when you uh, when you're hiring for a particular role, always hire and bring in more diverse people and support and promote people, especially people coming from marginalized group and um, women, especially who don't uh, sometimes get promoted because of gender roles. Uh, then we need capital, right? We need investments, we need fundings, we need people uh, investing in marginalized groups. We need people who teach and can share their expertise with marginalized groups. Uh, and least thing you could do is if you're not interested in doing any of these, just give shout outs and show your support whenever people um, are asking for help uh, or expertise um, or even to share uh, their uh, campaigns or their word around. So just help them do that. That's the least you could do. And last but not least, just don't be silent about things that bother you because at some point, only people who are bothered about certain um, stereotyping or uh, not being able to um, do best uh, uh, to reach your potential are the people who are going to make the change. So just don't be silent and do something about it. And the next thing is what you could do is be there for in the communities just as for represent, not just for representation, but we know that seeing is believing. The more number of women there are in the workforce, in the communities, the more will get attracted and will come there. Because you want a review from a woman to join some community, join from some team and know that they feel safe. So always go for focus groups and also have role models. Uh, encourage people to be role models by just being there, even though you don't have to be like a dedicated uh, you know, uh, role model, you just have to be there to show that 
you support people and people can come to you. And we also need diversity in topics. So people with different uh, varied plethora of expertise should come together and sit on a table and discuss um, how to grow together. And uh, I think many people have been talking about this, but uh, the whole point about community mindedness, how it comes together is by creating a sp safe sp space for people in the community, in the teams where uh, the language normalizes. So when you have, I give this example all the time that when you have a group of women or a mixed uh, gender groups and you use guys for them, that is definitely going to exclude a lot of people in this uh, communities and groups. So we need to change our language to make people more inclusive. Also, when you call women girls, uh, you, women are not girls. They would be if they were if they were minors, right? So that is a bit of talking people down and not giving credit for who they are. So always convey respect and care and uh, respect people for what, who they are and show that in your language by making the change. And also, I like that when uh, you uh, people share what pronouns they actually identify with because that shows that you care and you also want to know uh, how this person uh, identifies or how you can address them. So definitely language matters. Make sure that you keep these things in mind next time when you meet people from diverse backgrounds. Allyship, uh, my next uh, advice on allyship is that don't be afraid to approach people from marginalized group, people of color or uh, each people who are uh, starting out new in IT or want to learn to code. Uh, do not feel like uh, they don't belong with you. Just show them their support. And it's really nice to have people uh, who are experts or even just to like be uh, have a reassurance that you um, can do this when it's coming from somebody who has already done this, if you ally with them, it's nice to know that you can do this too. So uh, I always talk about this another topic, code of conduct. Code of conduct always ensures that everybody is on the same page and people understand that there are some rules in the community. The way you behave, the, um, the way um, you communicate always matters. Because like I was saying, the language matters, but the rules and values also matter. Um, so just for people to feel safe, you would have to create that environment where you reinforce these rules, which might not be obvious for everyone. So this would uh, actually help you avoid certain hassles that might come in the way, like harassment, insults, um, uh, yeah, inappropriate behaviors, which might uh, occur if they don't know what the rules are in the community. And I always advocate for retention by mentorship. That means when you always support people uh, who are uh, aspirants and newbies, uh, then definitely uh, people in this communities always want to come back. They have fun and they want to come back and they want to learn more. This is what is the environment I'm talking about. When you go to co focus communities, you always see this inclusive, um, uh, feeling that uh, you're not alone and you feel safe to share. So we need those communities and that's how we empower and lift each other and learn from each other. Uh, nobody has to be perfect. We just have to be vulnerable and be ready, uh, legend, uh, like authentic to ourselves and say, okay, I don't know. Now, now can someone please tell me who knows this, how to do this? So be vulnerable, uh, and especially if it's coming from seniors and uh, people, managers, et cetera, uh, it feels more authentic and feels better. Like you feel that safety uh, very quickly. So next, uh, another thing that I think works is that you, if you're appreciative, those little things, those little gestures, the power poses, the high fives, and the, uh, when you celebrate milestones, give emojis and thumbs up. I think it always helps uh, to show your support and use all those good stuff just to make sure that uh, you, you are supported or you are supporting someone. And finally, I think this is a super important topic that you if you have a sense of belonging or purpose in a group, People always come back. So also when you're creating an environment in the workplace, if you create this belonging, then people are always staying uh, in IT. So to attract more women in IT, 
create that environment uh, so they don't leave. And this is my core value. I feel like everybody can be a mentor, especially if you, people from who have just started are the best people to explain things better uh, and they're more relatable. And we have also seen this, that people who are experts find it hard to go back uh, to being a beginner and understand where they're coming from. So uh, we have this uh, expert blind spot. So I would say at any stage, just become a mentor. You don't have to be a designated mentor, just be there for somebody, ask them how you could help and uh, write good comments, uh, give high fives and appreciate somebody's good job. That is already great and people feel uh, good and supported immediately. And another thing that I always follow and I'm trying to do as a part of Coder B community as well is like, tell your story. Don't just be in a corner uh, doing your own thing. Just tell your story, come there, uh, come to meetups, be there and try to tell your story and inspire some people. You don't have to do this by, uh, you know, with an intention or anything. When you resonate with someone, you can share your story. Uh, it's, it's the more you share your story, people find it, uh, they can connect with you and they can ask you for help. And last but not least, I just want to say that lack of diversity in IT is nobody's fault, but inclusivity is everybody's responsibility. So if you can do that little tiny bit, uh, which will make a change, ask a question, choose, choose to challenge. I think today being Women's Day, definitely if you don't have a voice, all you can do is just ask a question and that will always have a ripple effect and you will see more people will join you because uh, just pay it forward. And um, yeah, that the sense of that um, you do it together is so powerful that it would create a ripple uh, in the whole community, hopefully. So this is just uh, some notes and uh, I do provide private mentorship if someone's interested about if you're struggling with something, I'm happy to talk to you and some credits about um, how I started this, why I started the, talking about influencing diversity. Uh, and that's my uh, finally my Twitter account. It's called just a bad robot if you're interested. Thank you all so much for listening today and I'm so happy that I got to share this time with you all. I can't hear you, Teresa. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. We had to we had to um, report and ban our first uh, internet troll. Um, just had to report like four times. Uh, apparently this event is still too avant-garde and um yeah thank you for your talk avara is going to uh, do the q a now so i'm gonna be like hi Sonia. thank Hello. you for your talk <laughs> yeah thank this you. is this is um an interesting topic uh for me because i'm african-american and mm -hmm. uh, I live in Germany, so I'm not a native German. I'm <laughs> I'm from a different uh, age group. I'm from a different uh, racial group. I'm from a yeah. different <laughs> gender group. So sure. pick <laughs> pick one, <laughs> right? <laughs> and this is yeah, pretty much consistent everywhere I go. Um, yeah. it doesn't bother me. I agree. Yeah, yeah. and. I find that it, other people are more uncomfortable than I am <laughs> mm -hmm. with the topic, but um, it's a bit challenging. And the question really is that, you know, how do you show support for, you know, diversity and marginalized groups without giving the impression that somehow you're excluding another? Like I talk to my male, some male friends or colleagues and they're like, oh, pie ladies, but well, why are you guys only were focusing on ladies, right? Or something like yeah. this. And how do you, tackle this mm -hmm. so uh, i mean basically you have to explain that there is a problem first right there's a social issue that's why we have focus groups and focus groups are working really hard doubly hard or even way harder than others who really are privileged and don't care about these kind of things so uh, i always start with uh, if you we are always inclusive 
So if you're happy uh, to, to join us, we need more allies, right? Mm -hmm. So you can come and understand our problems. And we have focus group because someone can share something in a safe space. And sharing with everybody in public is not easy. And mm -hmm. that is why we have focus groups. So I think um, I encourage people. I know that we want to get rid of this focus group once we have that, we have reached that equity and equality everywhere. So that is the whole point that we don't want for this group, but we have to work harder and people should come together to um, help people lift each other. And focus groups are the best way to do this because of the sense of safety. People share their stories honestly. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Yeah, that, that really makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.